Hello friends, Josh Fosgreen here, and I'm gonna teach you how to play this. So we're gonna dig right into this. This is an exercise that I actually wrote for myself because I've been working on tapping with my ring finger more in, uh, in the right hand, which is normally my plucking hand because I play right-handed even though I'm left-handed. Anyway, so uh, there's a lot of stacked fifths, a fifth over here and a fifth over here, just kind of moving those shapes around with some slight exceptions that we'll get to. So it's a little bit tricky if you're a beginner, but um, it's also the same shape over and over, so it's a good way to train up your tapping accuracy and strength. So here we go, starting out, the first four notes tell you a lot about this exercise, and the way you want to tap these is index pinky in the left hand, and then index ring in the right hand. So you get index pinky, index ring, and then uh, two more notes in the pattern. This is a six note pattern that repeats twice. So we go index pinky, index ring, pinky, index. Uh, and that's the first six notes. So I would recommend getting comfortable with that. You might even want to just repeat that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Until you can do it pretty quickly without thinking about it. And that's one of the tricks with tapping, by the way, is just memorizing the patterns and hitting things in the right order. You could just as easily play. Just go straight up and down. You just have to train yourself to be able to play these different patterns accurately and not accidentally switch to the other one and not the one you're thinking of. Okay, anyway, so we play those first six notes, and then we play them again, uh, starting on beat four of the first measure. So one and two and three and, then the pattern repeats, four and one and two and, and then we actually play a new pattern on beats three and four of the second bar. We play root fifth in the left hand, index pinky, and then instead of playing uh, fifth, we play a whole step. So it's the same shape, uh, basically, except we're moving this note over to the D string. See how I did that? I cleverly trying to work out the ring finger in the same basic configuration, but different variations. So, so I'm actually doing a hammer on there. So it's not just a straight tap. I'm keeping the index tap down and then hammering on with the ring finger and missing occasionally. So that's the first two bars. And I'll talk about how to get this up to tempo in, in a little bit, but we'll just keep walking through the fingering. The uh, bars three and four are extremely, extremely similar. The first six notes are the same. And then on the repeat, when we get to the right hand, you're just gonna move up two frets. Okay, so original pattern, and then move the right hand up two frets. So bars three and four again, one and two and three and move up. Uh, sorry, one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and. So it's the same music, I just slid my hand up. Very, very creative stuff. <laughs> so that's the first half down. Then the second half is easy for the first two bars because it's the same as the original first two bars. Same fingering, same notes and everything. Now, this is gonna look like it's really different than the other bars, but it's actually not that different in terms of hand shapes, which is what I was thinking when I wrote this. Okay, so moving on to the G6 chord. So we're playing index, pinky on the G and the D, and then index, ring on the E and the B. So it's the same, look at these shapes. It's the same shapes as when we're playing this except that we're going same string between this pinky note and this index note. Pretty clever way to get a different chord out of the exact same coordination activity. So then, uh, kind of the same six note pattern vibe we were doing before. Index, pinky, index, string, index, and then hammer on with the index. So you're keeping this note down. Uh, and then that's the first group of six notes. This is six notes, six notes, four notes in every phrase. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we go to the D chord. This is the only place where the pattern changes significantly. So we go index with the left hand and then index ring with the right hand and then pinky on the F sharp 
with the left hand and then ring index with the right hand. So index, index, ring, pinky, ring, index. So that's your D pattern. And then your last four notes back to the original shape. Index, pinky, and then index, ring. Now I tried to blow your mind here, and I blew my own mind when I was first practicing it by flipping the shape around. So instead of having the power chord like this, the ring finger has to go on the string below the index. Okay? So those last two bars all together. Index, pinky, index, ring, pinky, index, index. This is the only different pattern. Significantly, index, index, ring, pinky, ring, index, and then index, pinky, index, ring and you're done. Okay, so the tempo that I marked this at in the PDF, which you'll get if you're a patron on my Patreon page, if not, you can just read it in the video, so it's not a big deal, but uh, I marked this at 150 beats per minute as eighth notes. Okay, so it's not super, super fast, but you're probably not gonna be able to start there. So what I would do if I were you, if you wanna work this up to speed, two things. One is start in small chunks. So um, like I said, this is all in groups of six notes, six notes, and four notes, um, or three beats, three beats, two beats. Uh, start with one chunk. So start with the six pattern, one, two, three, four, five, six, and get it to where you can do that without a metronome, just at a somewhat regular pace. Make sure you're getting nice, clean notes and good accuracy and stuff like that and then work that up a little bit, and then try to do two chunks, and then try to do three chunks, and then maybe you're doing two bars at a time, and then you could just practice the first two bars. You know, do that over and over and over again. Um, so that's how you can start doing larger phrases, just start really small, and then add more notes. If you try to learn every single note in this all at once, it's gonna be too hard. That's just not how dense music like this works. You have to take it in small chunks. The next thing I would do is start slow. So rather than start at 150, you even start at half the tempo. You keep it at 150, but do it as quarter notes. Just a chance to make sure everything's really clean. And then from there, I'm just using my little Korg TM50 tuner metronome here. Um, just bump it up a few BPM. So uh, I'll take it up from there. Let's do it as eighth notes now. So I'll take it down to, let's say, 80 beats per minute. Uh, bump that up. So this would be the equivalent of doing quarter notes at 160, but now we'll do eighth notes at 80. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I practice there for a while, then maybe I do it at 83 a few days later. And you just have to take this stuff really slowly. This is the same thing I do, and it's the same thing every other professional musician has had to do, is you just find the tempo you can do it well at, and just increase that tempo gradually over time. There's a variety of ways to do that, but there's no way around <laughs> starting slow. A couple more quick things I wanna tell you about this lick. Um, one thing that makes tapping licks easier to play is when you only have to really think about one hand at a time. If you have to think about both hands at a time, it's hard. So the way I often write my tapping lines, because I'm not the greatest tapper in the world, um, that was a pretty high bar is set for the, pretty, the best tapper in the world. I'm not even close to that. But um, anyway, one of the things I strategize around for the limitations of my tapping abilities is to try to make it so I only have to worry about one hand at a time. So for example, the left hand part in this couldn't really be much dumber and easier. Um, so that allows me to focus on the right hand, which is really the harder part because I've been doing hammer-ons since I was a baby. Not really since I was a baby, but you know, we do hammer-ons a lot as bass players. We don't do as much tapping in most contexts. So, um, so having an easy left hand part is a good way to write a tapping line that's doable. And then even when we get to the tricky stuff at the end, I always have a pivot point. So I play the G chord. And the last note was a right hand note, so that gives me time to get my left hand over to the D, and then that note gives me time to get my right hand in position, which gives me time to get this finger in position. And then this note gives me time to get to the F sharp. 
So I'm always trading off which hand needs to move and think about things with at least one note of buffer in between them, and that helps a lot. Okay, last thing I'll tell you about this lick is dynamics are really important when you're tapping. Uh, there's a tendency for the E and the A string notes to be louder than the D and the G string notes because they're more big and bassy, they're fatter strings. So if you don't think about dynamics, then, I don't know if you're hearing this over the YouTube, but um, uh, in a performance se se setting, you would be hearing a lot of this and not enough of this. So what I tend to do is, uh, with a pattern like this is try to tame my left hand, play like an a mezzo forte over here, and play it more of a forte over here, or scale it down, play mezzo piano, mezzo forte, or whatever. But um, rather than using compression and stuff to even out your hands, actually thinking about that yourself. So if you can think soft over here and hard over here, melody comes out a lot more, or what passes for a melody in this piece, um, and the bass notes don't just drown it out going root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. Okay, that's the tapping exercise. I hope you enjoy your stacked fifths, and I've really found this exercise beneficial for my personal tapping technique. My ring finger is feeling a lot stronger and more accurate after messing with this and some similar exercises for the last couple months because there's a band that I'm playing with now where I actually do a little bit of tapping. I'm tapping on an actual gig out in public. Who knew it was possible? Um, so I've been trying to get my technique a little better so I don't have to worry about those parts as much. Um, the PDF for this will be available to my patrons on Patreon as well as a little bonus video where I'll talk more about how to make up lines like this and what I was thinking when I came up with this. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your kind support and viewership over the years. And uh, if you're new, make sure you subscribe and click the little bell so you actually get notified when I put out videos. Otherwise, they'll get hidden by videos of babies playing with cats, playing with gorillas, playing with rhinoceri. And frankly, that's more interesting than bass lessons, but uh, watching those videos doesn't make you any better at bass. So that's the catch. So weigh your options, do what's right for you, and I'll see you next time.